welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our CPR series looks at certain topics that come up in life, and we attempt to discuss them in a way that relates to everyone. At times, we bring in the arguments of those opposed to the Word of God in order to practice contending for the faith that God gave His church. It is our prayer that you will be equipped to give a defense for the truths of the Christian faith with humility and respect. Welcome to another Burden and Blessing podcast. I'm Pastor Mark Tiefel, and joining me today is Pastor Sam Rodebaugh. And we're going to be discussing a somewhat a unique topic today, uh, looking at two sports celebrities in our culture and a couple of recent events with them that touch on elements of our Christian faith. Uh, so, Sam, good to have you with us today, uh, and I'm excited to talk about this with you. The two people that we are looking at are Aaron Rodgers, uh, Green Bay Packers quarterback, and then Kobe Bryant. And I'm sure many people of our listeners know in the last week about the passing of Kobe Bryant. But starting with Aaron Rodgers, uh, Sam, Tell us a little bit about the context here of how the topic of the Christian faith came up in the last couple of weeks with, with the life of Aaron Rodgers. Well, first of all, that's my quarterback and uh, one of those situations and, that I don't necessarily want to know more about him than than what he does on the field. Um, you know, he's always... I'm, I'm guessing that'll be the same for many of our listeners. You probably. know, he's a Green, Green Bay Packers quarterback. Yeah, I got a lot of texts and things from people that were you know upset at what they heard and that's because in Packer country we love the Packers we love Aaron Rodgers um, but you know he's always been known as a, a Christian it was you know kind of our general idea of where he stood spiritually and in more recent years you know some things have come out about his beliefs that it weren't quite as you know widely made known as as this recent interview um, that m made me start to question where he stood spiritually. Um, and then it was just at the end of December, I think, he was on a podcast, or maybe it was the beginning of January, he was on a podcast with his girlfriend, his current girlfriend, Danica Patrick, former NASCAR driver. Uh, yep, she has, another celebrity. Yep, yeah. She has a podcast where she she just interviews all these celebrities and, and goes into what makes them unique and things like that and and so she worked her way up to her boyfriend Aaron Rodgers she said on the podcast she was nervous to talk about it be, talk about him with it because he's extremely intelligent as she said and and other things and one of the things they touched on early and and throughout the podcast kind of was um, religion and spirituality and and Aaron Rodgers touched on you know what he grew up in and where he stands now and uh, it was really just kind of depressing all around yeah, well, give us some detail here about, based on what Aaron Rodgers talked about, uh, what kind of church do, did he grow up in? I mean, we don't typically analyze every belief system of every celebrity, but it, like you mentioned, in this case, he, for most of his life, he was a professing Christian, and in the public sense, too, kind of giving off that, that aura of being a Christian, and, and, and sometimes when he... When, when individuals like that who confess Christ uh, backtrack on that and, and end up denying those beliefs, that can be hard for Christians to handle when they claim to have come from that background. But based on what Aaron Rodgers talked about, what kind of background of the Christian faith do you think he had? Well, you know, what church he belonged to, um, we're not sure, but, you know, some of the teachings he alluded to, and we'll get into that later, you know, some of the teachings he alluded to kind of help us understand where he's coming from but you know just to give the the listeners here a feel for his church you know he he kept describing throughout this podcast about um you know it was a large church he'd go every single sunday with his family but he said there was there was big church and then the children would always get sent off into you know little church uh, rooms uh, he said you know didn't necessarily love big church, but he always really liked little church. And as you went up, you go in different sections. And he said, you know, you play games. And he, he mentioned in the podcast that he, you know, he used to throw stink bombs with some of his friends during church. You know, he's talking about the little church rooms and stuff like that. So, you know, not necessarily the same type of church that many of our conservative Lutheran listeners are, are familiar with. You know, it was, it was really a segmented church body where, 
the adults would stay in big church and everyone else, you know, just went and did their own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he talked, the word that stuck out to me when he was describing church is that he wanted it to be fun. Right. And that's what he, that's, that's how he, he almost like he was kind of that chill, relaxed Californian guy that the stereotype we have in our mind of just wanting to have a good time. Let's look at a couple of the direct things he said about church and about his beliefs today. One of the quotes that stuck out to me, he said this, he said, um, rules, regulations, and binary systems don't resonate with me. What does he mean by that in the context of church? Well, you know, he has the the misconception that so many people have about, um, you know, more conservative theology or really church and Christian church in general, but especially more conservative the church is, this is the the idea people have that it's all it is 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 rules or or binary systems. You know, I've heard former Catholics say, you know, I was Catholic, but I got sick of all the rules. And, if, you know, of course, what overall someone like this or Aaron Rodgers is referring to is they're referring to, you know, the law. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure, you know, that that with many things in life, spe specifically morality, there is black and white and it's black and white is dictated by God. Um, but Aaron Rodgers doesn't seem to necessarily see that as as something that's dictated by God, but rather a man made sort of thing that that the church erects in order to to make themselves stand out and make and put other people down. Mm -hmm. And it's dangerous to deny those elements of what God says because it turns into just this free for all subjective playing field where it's all based on opinion and feeling. And it felt like a lot of his thoughts came from that feeling based perspective of what, what he wanted to believe in the path he wanted to choose, what others might want for themselves instead of, looking at religion as something dictated by God, and that certainly can be a dangerous pitfall to jump into. Yeah, he, he had said those exact words. He said, um, you know, what what I wanted. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted out of religion. Exactly. Um, yeah. After the, the binary systems quote that you said, he said, you know, eventually he found the path to spirituality, which was really much more meaningful for him. You know, the, a quote I, re I read or heard once was, you know, to be spiritual and not religious means that you worship a God that doesn't speak. And I think that's a perfect description of this quote unquote yeah, spirituality outside of religion. Um, you know, the Bible, we in the Bible, we have a God that does speak. You know, that is God's words being spoken to us. Not only what is right and what is wrong, but what he's done in order to save us from our sins. But exactly. yeah. if, if you want to be free of all of that and just be spiritual, then you want to worship a God of your own creation. And then there is no God speaking. It's only you speaking and crafting God in your own image. And, and sadly, that, you know, that's the religion that Aaron Rodgers has crafted for himself. Yeah. Here's another quote that he had. Um, he said, religion can be a crutch, something people have to have to make themselves feel better. If you were in a room with Aaron Rodgers, how would you respond to that statement? Well, I was actually I was actually talking about this with my confirmation class this morning. And, um, you know, one of the kids said, well, it is a crutch for the week. And it's true, you know. In the right sense, Christianity, religion, well, the true Christian religion is absolutely a crush for the weak. You know, we we understand that we are weak, that we are poor, that we have nothing to bring to the Lord, nothing to offer to the Lord. That you know, apart from Him, we have no strength resting in ourselves or in our way to salvation. Um, so absolutely, it's I mean, it's not just a crutch. It's it's the uh, you know, thinking of football, it's the cart they carry the the people on to get them off the field. You know, that's that's what <laughs> yeah. religion is. God has yeah. to carry us carry us off the field into heaven. Um, yeah. But, you know, in Aaron Rodgers' mind, and what a lot of people mean when they say this, is not spiritually weak or dead in sin. He he says, you know, crutch for the weak, like the, the weak-minded. Um, after that, he was talking about the, you know, this duality of the church. He says there's the, you know, it's all about, it's a crutch for the weak that's supposed to make us feel better about ourselves. He says it's all us versus them, or saved versus unsaved, or heaven versus hell, holy and righteous versus sinner and filthy. He says it's all just a meant to make you feel better. And, okay, in a sense, yeah, religion is meant to make us 
feel better, but it, only from the proper perspective. His idea is that that we as Christians craft these labels in order to just make ourselves feel better in a way that isn't truly represented in reality. Um, whereas, you know, all of these things, which he said, saved and unsaved, heaven, hell, holy, righteous, sinner, filthy, you know, these are biblical terms, but these are declarations of God. And it's when God declares it about us through Christ, his son, that all of a sudden I can start to feel good in his words. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's not looking at it through the lens of Christ. He's looking at it through the lens of, of exclusivity, that, that yeah. here I am just getting together with people that look like me and talk like me and excluding everyone else in on man-made terms. Yeah, I think what we see with Aaron Rodgers and what he says is what happens when you grow up in a church that really doesn't have the gospel. The I don't think he's really ever – fully grasp what the unconditional gospel is because it seems like every time the gospel or the work of Christ was taught to him or preached to him, it was done so in terms of the law as, as almost a new law that, that makes the person better on their own terms and on, in their own way. And that's certainly not what church is. It re, his, his statement reminded me of the familiar saying that uh, church is not a museum for the saints, but a hospital for the sinners. Mm -hmm. And so what I think what Aaron Rodgers needs is a healthy taste of what a confessional church is like, a church where people are openly and honestly admitting their sins before God, uh, not talking about anybody else's life, but talking about their own and, and what they've done wrong and why they need Christ. It, it almost sounds like he's never experienced that before. And that leads me to the next spot that I wanted to talk about with you, and that is, you know, you mentioned we don't know exactly what I think he may, he maybe mentioned the name of his church. I'm not sure. I can't remember, but we don't know exactly what his total background of church was like, but it sounds like it was kind of of the non-denominational format, almost maybe a mega church uh, with some of the characteristics he, he right. described. And he mentions a number of points of theology actually as well. He talks about the, t the concept of the 144,000 people only being saved in heaven, taking that term literally. He talks about God wanting to condemn people to hell. Um, he talks about believing something because you feel it to be true. All of those uh, points are theological elements of the, you know, evangelical, mm. whatever you want to call it, Baptist type of theology that is so pervasive in American culture. So just share some thoughts with us based on based on our ability to recognize some of those things in what he says. Why is that especially dangerous for, for Christians in America to that, that why why do they need to be especially conscious and aware of that type of theology of Christianity? Well, all of it really robs us of you know the assurances that we have through through Christ's cross. I mean, you know the the hundred forty four thousand thing is referring to um, the false millennialist view that comes from Revelation, um, Revelation which is which is given as a um, what do we call that? Um, apocalyptic figurative literature yeah, figurative language it's apocalyptic yeah. language uh, you know it starts out John's like I saw a vision in the vision we have Jesus with a sword protruding out of his mouth you know clearly this is all visionary language um, and part of that he says 144,000 this is a you know he's essentially saying this will be my complete church that I will gather together with me not a single one will be lost um, and yet so many have taken that and run it and said 144,000 is literal. And, you know, like Aaron Rodgers was saying in the podcast, this was right on the heels of the, the duality. He was talking about holy and righteous and, and sinner and filthy. He said, we can sit here and, and say, well, we're going to be saved. And there's only 144,000 saved, even though, and he brought it up and he was correct. He said, even though there's 7 billion people in this world and, and even more, you know, through history, um, yeah. He said that doesn't make sense, and and really it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But not make any just, sense. but not just because you feel it, because of what the Bible says too. Right, exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's going back to the Word of God ultimately that helps us realize that's not the case. Yeah, it you know that that whole mindset, this hundred forty four thousand thing, it can it can really, well, the whole millennialist mindset in general can can just kind of make you um, complacent. And say, well, whatever's going to happen, happens, and I'm going to be saved. I know I'm with the 144, and, you know, my neighbor over here is not, and just, well, whatever. 
and that really leads to this double predestination mindset. You know, we, you know, he was referring specifically to predestination when he said, you know, God wants to condemn most of the planet. Um, this, he can't believe a God. He says he can't believe in a God like that. Yeah, that would send anyone to hell. That would want to yeah. condemn most of the planet. And you know, it's this uh, this idea that if God says he has predestined some to heaven, well, then what he doesn't say in the Bible must also be true that he predestined every single other person to hell. Um, you know, the Calvinists. This is a huge part of their theology that God does not want everyone to be saved. But the danger of that is. And clearly it turns God into a liar. God says, you know, God our Savior desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Uh, not the simplest final passage ever. God so loved the, the world. world. Yeah. So, you know, every single one of these errors that, that he was fed growing up, you know, mm. they're not just, you know, an, just an error here or there. They all go right back to the foundation of, of Christianity, which is which is God's grace through Christ Jesus. You know, it's epiphany right now. The manifestation of God's grace in Jesus Christ. That's what the season's all about. And that is what's under attack by these millennialists' uh, false teachings. Yeah, which is why we need to continue testing the spirits, as God says, pointing these things out. That's what we're attempting to do in the podcast here, pointing out some of the dangers here, not railing on any individual or, or church or anything like that, but just showing people these are real matters for your faith, and they, they will affect the way you believe. Mm -hmm. The last question I had on, on Aaron Rodgers for you is, and this might be a bit of an opinion question, but what is the effect when a major personality like Aaron Rodgers says these things about Christianity. Well, you know, this is just speaking as a Packer fan. And I'm I'm a big Packer fan. And you know, one of the things that bothers me about Packer fans, but it could go for any any big sports fans of any team. You you tend to raise the individual, you know, the star player that's you know on your team that's yours and not anyone else's you raise him above human status to you know not god status but pretty close you know i would the i would say like idolatry would be a pretty proper term for maybe what a lot of packer fans do with aaron Rodgers, and you know not that anyone i mean i hope not anyone's just listening to what he says and says yeah i'm just gonna go with that but you know sometimes you get the sense in sports that people would maybe even listen to their star quarterback before they would listen to their pastor, you know. Yeah. And you think about if there's any young kids out there that that just love Aaron Rodgers and you know just want you want to do everything like Aaron Rodgers, it's not so far fetched to imagine that some kid was listening to this and and really, you know, he maybe he's having some of the same questions and instead of instead of talking to his pastor, he's just like, "Oh yeah, that all makes really you know, makes a ton of sense." Mm -hmm. Um so and it's discouraging, you know, as a Packer fan to hear all this. And it's just from the the Christian perspective, it's extremely depressing to hear all this. Um, but, you know, I, I hope that a lot of people are hearing those things and can just identify the, w the error of his ways. Um, but, you know, knowing the fan base and knowing his stature in there, you, you know, the worry is that that it could cause some people to go astray also. And I pray that's not the case. Yeah, it's and it's a good reminder that whether our sports figures are good Christians, solid Christians, or of another faith, we don't we don't follow them and, and enjoy their personality because of their religious beliefs. That's not why we should, uh, you know, listen to them or or follow them. It's it's about sports, and that's a different field. And and sometimes it, that attachment gets blurred, I, I believe. And I think you pointed out the danger of that pretty well. So for our listeners, too, uh, when it comes to the, the video we've been mentioning or the podcast of Aaron Rodgers, we'll put that link in our comments section here of our podcast so that you can take a look at that for reference if you'd like. Moving on to the second sports celebrity we were going to address, obviously, probably even a bigger story in the last week, and that is the death of Kobe Bryant. Uh, for those listening who are not aware, probably not very many people, but uh, on Sunday – uh, Kobe Bryant passed away in a helicopter crash uh, just I, just outside of Los Angeles. I believe there were nine total people on board, uh, including Kobe's younger daughter. Um, 
it's been a huge topic mm-hmm. and i know you and i both follow sports podcasts we we you know we're, we we are sports junkies so we we're obviously aware of it but it's been a national story too mm-hmm. it's been a story that's touched a lot of people not just in the sports scene um give us some context why do you think this particular story with kobe bryant has been such a huge story in the last week well you know, i'm a i'm a big nba fan and I know you are too. And you know Kobe Bryant. I mean he, he's a he's one of the top 10 players that I've ever played. I mean I don't think there's any argument about that. And you know maybe some of you aren't super familiar with Kobe, but I'm sure you all know Michael Jordan. And you know after Michael Jordan <clears throat> Uh, retired there was a we call it a passing of the torch you know from the best player on the planet face of the NBA passed it to Kobe Bryant and you know for my generation I grew up just at the very end of Michael Jordan's playing days and and Kobe Bryant was you know the closest facsimile to to Michael Jordan that there was and he carried the torch I'm sure a lot of people know who LeBron James is now and Kobe carried that all the way through to you know the late 2000s and then passed it off to LeBron James when LeBron James was ready to take it you know throughout the history of basketball there's like in every area era there's like one or two of these guys with some overlap you have like Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Russell and you know Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and and it just goes on down the line the weird the the hardest part I think for all of us is of all those guys like these torchbearers for the sport that people still look up to and still have fond memories of they're all alive except for Wilt Chamberlain I think is dead yeah and but now, he's a, he's a lot older too he was way you know he was played in the yeah. 60s but now all of a sudden you know Kobe Bryant died yeah. The sport's not that. The sport is really not that old compared to, you know, like the MLB, for instance. So to have one of the greats die, and it's the most recent great, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's just yeah. it's so shocking. And 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 like NBA players in general are probably just about the healthiest, you know, physically, you know, mm-hmm. right up there with soccer players, I think. You know, just physically healthy. And you look at them and there's no wonder in your mind why they live to be 80, 90 years old. It's because they yeah. they have to be in peak physical health. And Kobe Bryant was that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he kind of, was kind of the type of thing where you wouldn't expect that he could die in a helicopter crash. because yeah, Almost just... to men, many people have expressed that it seemed like he would never die, like he was immortal, you know, right. because of his popularity and fame. And Right. Yeah, I think, I think just listening to people – talk about hearing the news shock and awe yeah. is just everybody felt that and i felt that too I, I was never a huge kobe fan i i grew up like you mentioned i grew up in the michael jordan era i think and but i also you know i was in i was in high school and college when kobe was in his prime and so you know i think part of it too is that you feel so connected to these people even though you've never met them yep because they've been part of your life growing up. If you were really into sports, if you were really into basketball, Kobe was somebody that was just part of your life. Yeah. And they're in your they're on your television sets and they're in your living rooms and they're on your computers and your your phones and they're you just see them all the time and it's a fascinating thing that you you feel so closely connected to somebody that you've never talked to. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of weird and taking it now from that shock and awe perspective what are what are some of the things about Kobe's situation or this reaction that we see around the world that touch upon our faith as Christians well you know my first thought when it happened was you know I I pulled up Twitter and I saw just a couple minutes ago TMZ was reporting it and I thought what you know I just Fake, fake I, news, right? I, I thought it was yeah, fake. I could not possibly believe it. Maybe maybe like 10 or 12 more res- reports had to go by before all of a sudden I started comprehending it. It was just so shocking to me. And after I got over that initial thought, you know, my first thought was, boy, I hope he was ready. You know, I've, I've never really considered Kobe's, um, you know, spiritual, yeah, you know, where he, where he stood with God, you know, uh, so to speak. Um, I guess he was a practicing Catholic. At yeah, least that's something I learned too. Yeah, and, and I heard a, I heard another podcast I was listening to, and 
you know, after his final game in the NBA, the, the reporter said, what are you going to do tomorrow? And he said, well, set my alarm for five, go to mass and then work out and then go to the office. And, you know, from one standpoint, it's like, oh, you know, I'm glad that church is taking a priority. I wish it was <laughs> conservative Lutheran instead of Catholic, <laughs> yeah, like, obviously, yeah. for various reasons. But, um, you know, my first thought was was really just hoping that that he and you know for his daughter as well had been raising them around god's word and i don't you know totally know the answer to that but um you know you see you see all these people that are speaking about him and you know as always happens when a celebrity dies you know they're immediately you know sainted so to speak you know they're they're like now they're looking down on us from heaven. They're a better place yep. and all this different stuff. Yep. You or know, as if, car- carried to the angels, or right? Whatever. Right. Yeah. And as, as if this is just an automatic, you know, thing for for well-known people. And you know, obviously, we have a dis- different understanding of you know salvation and yeah, forgiveness exactly. of sins and all that stuff. So you know that it always comes to the forefront of the death of a celebrity is you know the eternity question. After I die, where am I going to go? And, yep. you know, sadly, so many people just they just automatically push these people into heaven without a doubt. And then, yep. you know, I think a lot of people just kind of get this this sense that God is this grandfatherly type of figure up in heaven, just kind of patting our heads and chuckling and say, ah, oh, you know, sport, get on in here and just yep. you know, bypassing our sins just cheaply as if just because we, just because we liked the person. Right. You know, or, we, or we respected them. And yeah, that was I, I think I had the same reaction when I first heard the news. I just immediately thought no one's no one's safe, really, in that sense. You know, it, it, just the total shock of somebody like Kobe dying just suddenly. It just it, there was an element of an unbelievable nature to it that man prioritize your life right. today yeah. because no one no one knows the day or the hour in that sense uh, of their own death and it, it's one of those moments where and th- and this is one of the reasons we wanted to address it on the podcast is because it's it's a it's a week where people are confronted with death and life. And it's those are two things that we typically don't try to think about from week to week. I think right. most people, especially with death, they don't want to think about it. They overlook it. They try to ignore it. They try to act like it doesn't exist. Well, in a story like this, you can't avoid it. Yeah. And it reminded me that church is really one of the few places left in our society where we talk about death. Yeah. You think about it. Even even in the even in the maybe the doctor's office maybe the therapist's office i don't know but church we are not afraid to talk about death we talk about it every sunday mm. we have it in our services we talk about our mortality uh, that the, the fact that life is short and so in some ways for the christian who's used to that this is not a surprising week yeah. you know maybe surprising that it happened to kobe bryant but this is reality for the christian yeah. and that's something hopefully people pay attention to and listen to because everybody needs to think about that people need to talk about death and and the beauty about church too is we don't just talk about our own death but ultimately we're talking about christ and that's where the hope is but how easily with those two concepts whether our own mortality or christ's immortality and what he did for us how often we try to just forget about that or not talk about it or not deal with it or push it off for tomorrow yeah. But Kobe's story, if anything for me, Kobe's story is just a lasting reminder. You cannot push that off. Talk about it today and deal with it today. In in preparation for going back a smidge there of what you just said, going in preparation for a sermon a while back, I was trying to find this children's nursery rhyme that dealt with death and I, I never ended up finding it. I can't rem- I, I could only remember a few snippets of it. Um, but when I was browsing these you know just doing google searches and stumbled across you know all these different forums and everything else and one of the forums it was people talking about um dark nursery rhymes and one of the nursery rhymes that someone said was the prayer that many of us said as children and say with our children now i lay me down to sleep yeah. i pray the lord my soul to keep if i should die before i wake i pray the lord to soul my, my soul to sake and this person said that and she was she she or he i don't know who it was but they said uh you know it's so dark and i never understood praying and my last thought before 
for going to bed was that I could possibly die in my sleep. What a dark and terrible thing. And, you know, in her whole, she, this, he or she, I don't know, again, just railing against Christianity as this, uh, you know, always holding death before you. And it, which is true. And you just brought that yep. up. You know, I, one of the things that I kept seeing, seeing anytime you have a major death like this, you always hear the same things. It's, you know, life is short you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. Go home, hug your family. Go home, be with people that you care about. Tell them you love them. All that different stuff. And those are all things that are are very true, and we should be doing those things because um, it's all it's all true. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Um, but the most important one of all those things that we need to be doing is is gathering around our savior you know it's the same thing that it's in the psalms i think and in hebrews you know know, while it is still called today you know is the whole premise teaches teaches to number our our days yeah it's you know it's be gathered around around the word of god right now because you don't know what it's going to be doing tomorrow i just looked up kobe bryant's career earnings 770 million dollars yeah he said you know you you think of a guy who is in peak physical health that has 770 million dollars he you can afford who can afford every method of life preservation that this earth can offer whether it's security guards or you know helicopter flights with a professional pilot or you know all of those different things and yet he died at age 41 with his 13 year old daughter which goes back to your point it just proves that that we don't know you know that's why it's so shocking to have him of all the people in the world to die on yeah. on Sunday it could really be me. And so, yeah, while it's still today, we need to keep mm-hmm. track of what's truly important. Yeah. And I think you bring up some excellent points of if you're a parent, talk to your kids about death. You don't have to dwell on it. It doesn't have to be the daily discussion around the dinner table, but don't be afraid to talk to them because they're going to have questions about it. I remember when my oldest son, Micah, was probably three or four years old. He asked, he said, he told me flat out that he was afraid of dying. Right. And so they're going to be, people are going to be, whether or not you try to gloss over the topic or just say, I don't want to think about it today or I'll put it off for later in life. You can't do that sometimes. Sometimes you need to address it and give your children what they need to hear. And I, I agree with you. It's like when situations like this happen, it's the 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 moment that spurred it on is the moment of someone's death but all we ever want to talk about is life mm-hmm. we want to talk about life right now or the life of the deceased or or the life that we should be doing or the relationships in life that are most important but for the christian and ultimately for all people the only way to get to eternal life the only way to get to life with god the the only life that conquers death is to go through the cross of Christ. And that's that's the the strange reality, at least in human senses, that people will confront in church and in, and in Christianity is our emblem is an instrument of death. Mm-hmm. Our Savior is one who died for us. He gained the victory over death through his own death. And so, again, the, the message for, from my perspective is you can't avoid the topic, address it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Don't be afraid to witness to others. Don't be afraid to pass it down to your family members and, and to not just say, oh, we remember the person or rest in peace, but say, this is what Jesus has done. Hmm. And, and I do take some comfort in the fact that whether it was Roman Catholicism or not, it seems like Kobe Bryant um, – hopefully had heard that message about his savior jesus and and believed it right no i don't think i have anything i can add i think you you covered it real good right there yeah well i appreciate you taking the time today and hopefully uh that this discussion about you know two modern day situations that touch on our christian faith um involving some uh, pretty well-known sports personalities. I hope the conversation and the discussion today was good for our listeners. Uh, please continue to uh, support our podcast as you're able to subscribe, share it, uh, tell others about it, and uh, we pray that the content will be edifying for your faith. Thanks for joining me today, Sam, and uh, catch the next Burden and Blessing podcast. We hope that you will join us next week for another episode of Burden and Blessing podcast. Our goal is always to bring you the whole counsel of God. Until next time, go in the strength of the Lord 
and preach the word.